coming to you live from the High Definition Studios here in Jacksonville, North Carolina, the home of Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune. I am so thankful that you folks travel with me down this journey that we've been going on now for, man, we're going into, I don't know how many years we've been doing this since 2019. And uh, what a privilege it has been for every week, Monday night, Tuesday night, Thursday night, having somebody in our virtual studios who is making an impact in their world. And I've just spent the last 30 minutes or so talking to a gentleman who it has got so many attributes and is so well traveled, but he, he's not keeping all of those attributes and all of those accomplishments to himself. And he's doing something that really inspired me when I uh, got to know him and hear his story about making this investment in the continuation of his craft. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you can find a craft, if you can find something that you love, if it's something that you're passionate about, man, I say, man, go with it with everything you got. That's what that's what I did. I can't change tires. I don't know how to, I don't know how to do anything, but this one thing. I know how to talk. <laughs> and so I said, Lord, can you please make this a revenue source for me? <laughs> and and uh thankfully he's been able to do that. But this gentleman is not just uh, about a revenue source, but he's also, like I said, about impacting uh, a generation and using a vehicle that all of us will be extremely familiar with. He uses a vehicle that uh, if you if you live a little bit at all, you will experience that. So I am welcoming to our virtual studios here at Impact Life 24-7, my friend, my new friend, Reginald Maestro Midget Jr. Welcome, Reginald. Thank you for having me. A pleasure to be here. Man, what a what an honor it is to have you, brother. And uh, we're so thankful that you have taken time out of your very busy schedule there in your engineer, engineering uh, layer there uh, to be with us and, and talk with us about uh, the great things that you've got going on. And so the typic, typically the way this works, Reginald, is I, that I want people to be able to connect with my guests. I want them to know you. I want them to feel your passion. And so people listen throughout throughout the whole night they'll come in for a few minutes or whatever so i try to give our guests information out early on and then throughout the show so reginald before we talk about anything spectacular tell people how they can contact you and get up with you brother where can they find you um you can definitely find me on facebook that's the main place that you can find me on facebook at um at my page reginald midget jr I also have a page for my Maestro Productions page that is on uh, Facebook as well. That Maestro Productions page is spelled M-Y-S-T-R-O and then Productions, and it's attached to my name as well. Also, when you get to my Facebook page, hit the follow button because I probably have maxed out on my friends list, so please hit the follow button. Yeah, and I, I know about that, that maxed out part, buddy. Right. <laughs> So any music that I have put out, it's on all digital downloading platforms. Um, you can look up uh, Can't Make It Without You. It's one of the last um, albums that I put out. Um, you can type in my name on iTunes, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, any digital downloading outlet for the most part, and you can find my music up there. I greatly appreciate the support. We're very, very blessed, uh, Reginald, because uh, as we were talking, man, music is powerful. And we are blessed to have someone of your caliber, someone of your credentials, someone of your value and worth that you bring to um, not only to uh, your local community, but actually internationally. So we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later on. But, uh, you know, I'm and like I said, Reginald, every Monday, Tuesday and Thursday, I got a stranger up in my crib, right? Oh. Every month, it happens without without fail. It's like clockwork, and uh, I have to keep my sponsors happy. So that's why I got to have strangers here all the time. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is that I want everyone to get to know you. So tell us uh, a little bit about Reginald and the Maestro, and tell us tell us about yourself, bro. Well, I'm def I'm from Newburgh, North Carolina, born and raised. And um, 
my my first passion and the first thing that I ever really loved was music. I started playing the drums. I think when I was three years old, that's when I got my first drum set. And I, I'll never forget the first music that I ever played on the drums was on a Christmas morning and my dad loved Al Green. So Al Green's Christmas uh, music uh, from back in the eighties. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the first music that I ever played on the drums, but um, always had a passion for music. Um, I was, got in band from sixth grade on up through uh, as long as I can remember. And um, I just had the privilege to be able to do music on a whole nother level. Music has taken me to, well, really all over this country. It's taken me out of the country. Um, it, it's been a blessing in my life, the gift that God has given me. And preaching, I am a preacher. And so between music and preaching, they definitely consume up my time and my days. And, yeah, so, and, and I'm and I'm thankful for both of those uh, both of those arenas that you that you flow in, uh, brother Maestro. And uh, we were talking about uh, the the power of music, and especially during these crazy times that we've been having. Um, and and I know that that it's influential because. Um, here's the deal you remember back in the days that you might be old enough to remember this i think you are uh when you had to wait for the song to come out on the radio you know you couldn't go to youtube right remember you couldn't go to you, you if you didn't have the record you had to have your tape recorder and wait for that song to come on and record it on uh, you remember them days brother i do i used to do that a lot <laughs> Having to, having to, my kids don't even know what a cassette tape is, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, um, with, with the work that you've done and, and especially being, uh, you know, an internationally known, uh, musical engineer and performer, let us know kind of some of the work and, and artists that you've worked with and, and some of your travels and how those things, uh, panned out. I, I really love to hear more of your story in that regard. Well, professionally, um, I got my start with a um, what what we call a quartet group called Tammy Edwards and the Edwards Sisters out of Greenville, North Carolina, and they were signed to um, the record label uh, Malico out of Mississippi, very popular gospel music record label. And so I traveled with them. I traveled with the Alabama Girls. Um, they were on the. Uh, Malico record label as well. But then in pursuing my own music, I have artists, some artists that I work with, um, one by the name of Benita Bernie Simmons. And we had the opportunity to travel over to Europe um, the end of 2019. And we had we spent seven days over there and we had a blessed time. Um, there are some artists that I'm currently working with right now, um, the Chanella Monroe. Vincent Beckden, um, definitely Benita Bernie Simmons. And there's a long, there's a long list. I have a list right now of about 30 artists that I'm working with that are actively working on music during this pandemic. That's awesome. Now, you know, one of the things I was thinking about is I'm from Cleveland and uh, they said the heart of rock and roll was in Cleveland. I think they just had a song. I don't know if that was necessarily true. Um, but when you talk about you know, someone getting exposure and, and, it, you know, in a, what we consider, you know, our whole region would be considered small town, brother, you know, mm -hmm. um, how do you feel like, I mean, in you, especially with your experience, because you're way more experienced in this than I, um, how is it, you know, artists can get exposure, even if they come from a small town, because you've done it. Well, I, I, I gained my exposure through traveling weekend after weekend. I was on the road. I was a road musician. So I traveled and I made connections long before that was before Facebook was popular, Instagram and, and a lot of other things. Right. And so now I think artists have to be consistent. You can use your 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 social social media is a huge platform for ex for exposure and um not being afraid to travel when you're called to do whatever it is that god has for you to do 
Yeah, man, that, that's powerful. You you brought two very, very good points because in our arena, hey, Greg and uh, Greg Smith, the VP and the executive producer of Impact Life 24-7, he and I traveled a whole bunch together because oh. he, as a speaker, we traveled all over, uh, you know, doing rallies for schools and community centers and churches and everywhere. And um, but then what we found is when you inject, like you said, social media, and then consistency, ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to listen to what the, what the reverend said. He said consistency. I've seen people, brother, even in, in my arena, start out wanting to do a podcast. I'm going to do a podcast because C.L. King's doing a podcast. Three episodes, you never see them again, right? right. <laughs> and, and, and like you said, man, the, the, the willingness to put the work in because it is the, if you're talking about from an industry perspective, it is some work, right? That's right. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, I think sometimes like, like we were talking about with Chris, sometimes people see the, you know, they see the Tatra Betts of the world and they see, you know, the Fred Hammonds of the world, but they don't, they don't know the actual other side of that. Like you say, the travel, the, the, the work, the, the labor and the connections and, and making connections, you got to be willing to make connections. And, 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 uh, and so even in New Bern, North Carolina, you're known all over Europe because you, you were willing to make those connections. Yes, definitely willing to make the connections and, and be consistent. Yeah. One, once, once you find out what your purpose and your passion is, if you're going to pursue it, go ahead and pursue it. Right. Because yeah. It is designed to make room for you. So music and preaching is an everyday thing for me. Right. Every Y'all can hear he got that preaching voice too, y'all. Y'all hear that? Right? <laughs> we might have to. We might have to take a little offering for the brother. <laughs> so I'm, I, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. To Impact Life twenty four seven. I'm here with the maestro Reginald Midget Junior of New Bern, North Carolina. He is a musical uh, maestro and uh, also a musical engineer. And um, let's talk about that piece real quick, uh, Reginald. The the engineering piece. What all encompasses that? Because, you know, I think sometimes there, there are, and Will Kennedy, who will be on the show tomorrow, he talked about uh, when he was talking to Chris, he says, man, you can't just be a gigger. You can't just be, you know, playing the drums. You need to learn the whole, whole package, right? You know, sound, yeah. all of that. Talk to me about how, you know, your engineering background came into play and how important that is. Um, my engineering background came into play when I was in the ninth grade. That was the first time that I went into a studio and it was a real to real studio. <laughs> and so, um, you're right. It was that long ago. <laughs> and so just sitting learning, I, I'm a music producer and I knew how I wanted my music to sound. Right. And after the engineer had engineered it and, and put the sounds where he thought they were supposed to be, I listened to it and I said, okay, I didn't create the song from that standpoint. Ah. And so that was the first time when I said, okay, I need to learn how to do this so I can learn how to place my music where it's supposed to be. Mm. And, and that's a lot of what engineering is, placing the music where it's supposed to be. That's a simple definition for it. Well, that's but that's a very powerful. I never even never heard it explained that way. Simple but powerful. And um it gives you, it definitely gives you more, uh helps you to become more of an authority and more control over the end result. I've talked about that with with people who will do. Uh, you know, songs in church that somebody else wrote, right? Mm -hmm. and I'll go listen, I'll, I'll be hearing it. And I'm just like, okay, it's one thing to do a, 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 a revamp. And it's, an, you know, it's one thing to, to, you know, spice it up a bit. But you, you always want to make sure that you uh, try to deliver the writer's intent. And some some songs I'm hearing, I'm just like, that ain't the way he wrote it. What are y'all doing? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, you go, you hear, you hear, it's like, that's not even the time signature that the songs wrote in. Could y'all please go back and, and that's important being, you know, respecting the gift and the artistry that you put out, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
as a producer, that that's a pet peeve that of um of producers when after you produce the music and then a band has to learn it. And then you show up one day and the and the band is there playing the music and if something is missing, you're like, oh no, that's not right. Yeah, right. Ex- exactly. So uh, a lot of people don't know this. I know because I'm the host of Impact in Life 24-7 and I've okay. been talking to you, homie. But a lot of people don't know or maybe they don't believe, but you play more than just one instrument, right? I do. I play more than one instrument. Okay, what well, and okay, why you make me have to work so hard? Tell us what the <laughs> instrument is, brother. <laughs> so um, the drums would be my first instrument. Um, the keyboard or piano or organ, anything like that would be my second instrument. But I also know how to play a saxophone. I know how to play a trumpet and I know how to play a bass. Nice. So Maestro, who has been... I'm not going to ask you because I know it's, it's tough to, I'll just let you pick the number of, of influences, but who have been your, your top influences uh, over your musical career? Like for me, I'm definitely going to pick uh, John P. Key, definitely going to pick, you know, Fred Hammond. That's the era, you know, that I, of music that I uh, grew up in church listening to. And so mm-hmm. Uh, those those types of influential folks are important. I love Tatra Betts' older stuff. His new stuff, I, I ain't too hot on. But his older stuff, when he first came out, he was hype. Um, yeah. So who, who have been your influencers? My influences come from a broad range and from a timeline that's this long. Right. So I, I would start with what I grew up listening to. My father used to used to love to listen to James Cleveland. And so I learned how to write because I'm a songwriter. I learned how to write music and piece together a song listening to James Cleveland. Mm-hmm. OK, um, John P. Key, definitely. When, when you look at North Carolina, John P. Key, Shirley Caesar. Yeah. Um, I love Marvin Sapp. Love Marvin Sapp and I love his musical arrangement. Has a great producer. And um, then on the other side of things outside of gospel. Yeah. I love jazz. Yeah, me too. I love jazz. That That's what I played in high school and even out of high school, college, and some more things. Jazz has always been my thing. Yeah, and uh, I told uh, the maestro that we're, we're blessed to have uh, the legendary drummer from the Yellow Jackets, which is a jazz fusion band, Will Kennedy. He'll be joining us tomorrow night at five. Uh, and it's so cool that I've got two drummers back to back. You know, I, 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 I couldn't have planned it any better. Thank you, Greg, for your assistance, man. Too cool. And it's funny because uh, the maestro's a drummer. I am what you would call a retired drummer. Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> bro, bro, they don't even, back in the days, you know, when Chris was little, he he looked up to Pops. But now, uh, he don't even let me get in the drum cage, bro. He don't even let me touch his... He just lets, he tells me to carry his drum bag. <laughs> I, I tell guys now, I, I play the drums in the studio. Right. Church is too complicated now. Church drumming is too complicated now. So I play the drums in the studio. <laughs> I, I, I feel you, man. I feel you. So... Um, so that's an interesting concept when, when we're talking about, um, like I told you that our show is live. <clears throat> a lot of my colleagues do a pre-recorded, um, podcast. I do a live because of my background in speaking. I just feel better knowing that other people are watching and there's a pressure to get it right the first time. What do you, in, in terms of your musical preference, uh, Mr. Reginald Maestro, what would you what do you prefer studio productions or live productions uh, mm. here's the thing <laughs> right i prefer live productions uh-huh. but even when you do a live production you still end back up in the studio that's right i, I knew you was gonna say that that's <laughs> right yeah because because you know so, it, you know it don't sound that good live on that album right <laughs> 
Yeah, man, that's right. It's like, okay, yeah, because uh, uh, you're right. You're 100% right. Even, even if you record it live, uh, they still go back and make it sound like it was. It, it, yeah, exactly. So what yeah. what work are you doing with young people relative to music? Um, right now, I am doing a lot of virtual teaching. Um, there are so many young people out here that are hungry to learn music. And um, I'm doing a lot of virtual teaching. I am doing a lot of making videos with scales and um, rudiments. Mm -hmm. And I just have them on hand, literally, in my phone. So when people call, I can just, here, learn this, learn this. Instructional videos. And so I, I do a lot of that now, especially um, since since the pandemic has um, you, mentioned, you mentioned rudiments, and like mm -hmm. I said, you know I'm a I'm a washed up drummer, but I do know when I hear those buzzwords. If if you know a kid sees you or young so a young person sees you rocking out at church and doing all the, the amazing things that I know you can do, and they're like, I want to learn the drums, uh, maestro. And you said rudiments. How important are rudiments in, in, in the craft of drumming? When you're baking a cake, the sugar makes the difference, doesn't it? <laughs> rudiments are definitely the sugar when it comes to drumming, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> well, it makes total sense. I get it, man. And that's right. But a lot of times, <clears throat> especially if you... You talk about making a cake. Let's maybe talk about building a house. If the foundation, uh, like I said, you know, Chris, he he practices on his practice pad more than he plays on that three thousand dollar drum set I got in the other room, and mm -hmm. and so that and I, that's all I hear. So that's if I think if you try to just jump right to the drums and and jam out, but never learn your rudiments, couldn't that limit you in your in, in terms of your in in terms of your skill set? It does limit you in terms of your skill set and your craft. I always encourage youth to learn. Um, as a matter of fact, I just did a post on Facebook this morning from my um, elementary school um, music teacher. Her name was Blaza Rich. And the thing that she told me was, learn the notes first, and that will make it easier for you to play what's in your heart. Ah, that's good. That's good. And, and I, I can appreciate that, man. Um, you know, I, I dabbled back in the days in the piano. And I remember my first piano teacher had me learn the scales in every key. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I got some friends that can jam and they can hit they can be in C, but they got to hit the transpose button after it's C, true. baby. <laughs> I used to be that guy a very long time. What did you say? You had to hit the transpose button. <laughs> That's right. Look, I got through. Look, when I became minister of music at church, I was just a drummer. Right. And then all of a sudden they called me one day and they're like, we want you to be the minister of music. And I'm like, you mean play the keyboard? Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can mess around with it a lot and you right. can know one song and you play that one song really good and people think you can play anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that was not the case. <laughs> <laughs> and be sure your sins will find you out, right? <laughs> exactly, real fast. <laughs> yeah, I know. My grandfather's church, uh, uh, you know, they're traditional, um, I don't know, full gospel, but small okay. church, small church. But anyway, in Cleveland, I would go there and, and uh, I would always be amazed <clears throat> because someone would get up and start singing, you know, in them old time churches, you know what I mean? <laughs> And they'd be in, I don't know what key they'd be in. They'd be in like the key of Z. <laughs> and it's my family church. So all my cousins on the organ, one's on keyboard and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, oh, they are not going to find this key. They are not going to find it. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just the, uh, the amazing uh, concept of theory to be able to say, okay, this is where she is. And then they play it like they recorded it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I'm, I'm totally fascinated by that. Um, so in terms of in terms of because I know you're a minister, but you you talk about your ministry is more than just in the pulpit. Uh, and and I love I love that component of it, 
because we can oftentimes think that the church is only in the building. And I think the pandemic has maybe showed us a little bit uh, how it needs to be outside of the building too, huh? Absolutely. Even if we look at scripture, a lot of times, uh, even if you look at the Apostle Paul, when, when they traveled and when he was setting up churches, a lot of times they had church right where they were at. They could be on the corner. They could be walking down the street. Whoever they met, whoever they needed to minister to, they had church right then and there. And they weren't always on their way to a building because the people that need it, everybody that, that needs what we have learned in church, they're not coming to church. Ooh, that's good. Go ahead. And so we have to make sure that we, as the church, um, step outside of the four walls. And I believe that this pandemic, God has a way of making us do what he intended for us to do. Right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And, uh, and so, you know, when we talk about, um, and I got to take a commercial break here, you won't be going anywhere. I just have to do this to, to make sure our sponsors stay happy with me soon at the nine o'clock hour. But you, you talk about um, <clears throat> bridging, and I think we talked about this, you know, the evolution and progression of the times and, and, mm -hmm. and how the church, which is, which is, you know, if all things to me still lead back to our faith, how the church has to be a, a relevant agency for bridging the gap to this next uh, generation. So I want you to hang tight and I'm gonna let you answer that when we come back, which you just stay right there. I just wanna let you guys know who are listening to Impacting Life 24 seven, um, that we really appreciate our sponsors and our sponsors who continue to support this, uh, this growing movement. When we first started, we didn't think we would, anybody would ever listen. And now thousands of people listen every month. And so we're thankful for our new gold sponsors, of course, you know, he always puts his money where his mouth is. That's Greg Smith, 100 Simple Ways. He's the author of 100 Simple Ways to Manage a uh, Property and Evidence Room. And I want you to get a copy of his book today. Uh, get with Greg on Facebook. That's Gregory Smith. Or you can email him at uh, Smith. G1963 at yahoo.com. Additionally, Michelle Perry out there in Dallas, Texas. I've watched her over the past few days and she is, she was frozen. Their, their house was frozen, but they, they survived. She's a woman of faith and she's also a gold sponsor. She's a founder of the Successful Diligence uh, LLC and also the host of the Successful Diligence podcast and the best selling author of The Pebble in My Shoe. I want you to connect with Michelle. Uh, and get a copy of her book at SuccessfulDiligence.com. Adrian Barker, who is also a gold sponsor, the host of the Adrian Barker Speaks podcast. She's a life coach and CEO of the Professional Global Etiquette. Uh, I want you to connect with her <clears throat> uh, at the ProfessionalGlobalEtiquette.com. We have also have uh, a ton of other sponsors who here's how you get your commercial become a gold sponsor but we also have some other sponsors that help keep the show on there every month and of course the cl king group incorporated is a gold sponsor you can find us at clkingspeaker.com so we talked about <clears throat> how the times have have moved and how things have 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 progressed and the young the young people how important is it do you feel uh since you are a minister and a, and a pastor there at the church how do you feel uh, the church's role uh, should be relative to reaching this next generation? I think that the church really needs to do what the gospel says that it should do. Is The gospel is very powerful. And so when we look at what's happening in the world, there, there are new drugs new temptations, yeah. new things on social media. You never know what the next challenge is going to be for our youth. That's right. You, you, there's so much happening in the world to the point to where the word that we give to the millennials and to our young children, it has to be a word that they can relate to. Yeah. We can't be so holy that we just say, no, don't do that. You're wrong. This is wrong. That is wrong. Sometimes the church might point out so much wrong without giving the blueprint for doing what's right. Ooh, man, that's good. That's good, ladies and gentlemen. That's good. Go ahead. And so we just need to make sure this is this is not criticizing any church. Right. But what I'm saying is 
when there's so much temptation in the world, when the devil is definitely on his job every day, right? we as the church have to make sure that we are on our job every day in a humble way, right. in a down to earth way, in a way that says we were all born in sin, but yet shaping in iniquity, meaning that we have all done wrong. Right. So there's a way to teach our youth and teach the millennials and teach those who are lost without doing it in a judgmental way. That's powerful. Victor Taylor, good to see you, my friend. Yeah, we're still doing great things because great people like you hang out with us. And uh, you guys know Victor Taylor. I'm sure you know Victor Taylor because he's there in New Bern. You know Alderman Victor Taylor? Yeah, so uh, we're, we're blessed to have uh, one of New Bern's own on our show tonight, the maestro, and uh, he, Reginald Midget Jr., and um, you are the minister of music there at West Street, right? That's right, West Street Christian Church. West Street Chris Christian Church, and what's the address there? It's 721 West Street, New Bern, North Carolina. 721 West, 721 or 720? 721. Okay, 721 uh, West Street, New Bern, North Carolina. I want you to go there, ladies and gentlemen, if you are in the Eastern Carolina area, and I want you to check out the maestro on keys, on drums, on bass, on trumpet, uh, <laughs> on guitar, on everything. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, oh, okay. I didn't know he was your, this is your, um, he's your uncle, man, everybody. See, I, <laughs> I can't say nothing bad about Victor Taylor because y'all all really... <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful when you talk about it, New Bird. And Victor, yeah. we gotta, Victor, we got to get you back on the show too, brother. We need to talk more about men's health. And I uh, got some health shows coming up uh, in March. So reach out and uh, let's put something together for April. So Maestro, <clears throat> you knew I told you this could happen, right? What's up, man? Since I, since I, since I am the captain of this boat. <laughs> I want you to bless my audience with just a little sampling of uh, one of those instruments behind you. Let us hear what the maestro does week in and week out. Let us hear a little bit, maestro. Okay. Well, <laughs> you said be instant in season and out of season. Let's hear it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, the maestro. And if you want to, if you would like to. Uh, the, the, he gives. I, do you give private lessons? I know you're doing them through Zoom for for kids. Are you, do you do private lessons too? I do. I do. Yeah, you might. You you know you might be able to help me, Maestro. I might come out of retirement when Chris goes off to play for the Army Band because our church uh, is gonna, our church is going to need a drummer. So I might have to come out of retirement, brother. I can't even keep two and four no more. <laughs> oh, you, it's still in you. <laughs> Look, my daughter is one of the worship leaders at church, right? And sometimes mm -hmm. if, if Chris ain't around and I got to get in the drum cage to, to fill in for her, she'll be looking over at me like, uh, Chris, <laughs> Chris, don't play it like that. What, what are you doing over there, dad? I'm just like, you know what? See, you can't, you can't, you can't help nobody. <laughs> so when, when you, when we talk about your, um, we've talked about your work, we've talked about your, your missions. You, you said that there's an opportunity for you guys to get back to Europe. Yes. Currently I'm um, speaking with, with some um, people over there. Um, they're about, they're, there's a good friend of mine by the name of Jeff Staten, who is a native of New Bern. And um, he has a choir called Voices United. And they actually wanted to experience church and experience the gospel in America. So they came here in 2018 at a concert that I was having at the Flame uh, restaurant. And they actually got a chance to experience, you know, the, the true gospel experience. Right. And so um, we took that same gospel experience and um, Benita Simmons and I, we went over to um, Germany. And um, we, we did that over there and currently been talking to Jeff and two other promoters about 
a um a a a tour. I think it's a seven city tour, but um it's it spreads across three different countries. It was spread across Germany, England, and France. Nice. And see, y'all need to take me with you. I know y'all gonna need a speaker over there. And come on. Uh, just, I know you got passport. Come on. <laughs> Um, so ladies and gentlemen who are tuning in to Impact Life 24-7, I, if you wonder why there's so much joy in the show tonight is because music, uh, music has a way of instilling uh, certain and, and inducing certain emotions. And, and you can tell by uh, the maestro Reginald Midget Jr. that his joy obviously comes from serving the Lord and using the gift that he has to make a difference, not only in his church, but also abroad and around the world. I think Greg said that he'll, who's that saying they'll be, oh, Dr. Nate Dunlap said he'll be security. Now he could be security. He's a bad man. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Dunlap though, but you can't be kicking me off the, off the, off the plane, bro. So listen, <laughs> when we talked about this, we talked about this in pre-show COVID has, has, placed a cloud of dark emotions throughout the country and even around the world, uh, Reginald. And how important have you seen your music and the music of others uh, to be during this time? Well, COVID um, has been very important um, in regards to um, changing the lives of so many people. I've had so many people reach out to me for just encouraging music, period. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, when you're sitting at home, a lot of people, you know, when you're quarantined and you're sitting at home and, you know, you're, I, I, I met a lot of people through um, social media that were actually experiencing COVID, mm. that were actually going through it. And they were going through it at the beginning of the pandemic yeah. when it wasn't, when, when they couldn't treat it real well. Yeah, it was worse. Yeah, right. It was worse. And so they were going through the fight for their life. And I had people to reach out to me for, for all kinds of music because music, it just does something to us. It's encouraging. I've never met anybody that didn't like some kind of music. Right. That's right. Even if they can't carry a tune in the bucket, they still like it. They still like it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and you're right, man. It's like um, there are there are days when uh, I can be I know people will not believe this, but there will be days when I'll be down, bro. And I say, man, I just got to put on some some music and I, my spirits get uplifted. Music is very, very powerful. And I know you you can probably teach about this relative to the first worship leader in heaven. And how, how, you know what I mean? How powerful, you know, his role was and, and now how powerful music is here on earth. Uh, and so I, I tell you what, I, I really, really appreciate Reginald, the maestro. I, I really appreciate you using your talents to make a difference. And, and Reginald told me this off camera. He said, anything that's got to do with something positive, he'll do it. So you, you, you can work in all kinds of genres. Huh? I mean, like you like jazz, rock, pop, you can do it all, huh? I do. As long as it's positive, I do it. Yeah. And, and positivity, we need more positivity, man. You know what? We've had enough negativity to last us both of our lifetimes. You know, we, we, if another negative thing doesn't happen, me and Reggie are, we're good. We don't need any more. Um, that's right. But I want you guys to connect with my friend. You can find him on Facebook. Go like, tell us your pages again, bro, so people can connect there. Um, you can go to my personal page, Reginald Midget Jr. Um, you can go to my Maestro Productions page. That's M Y S T R O Productions. Um, and you can also find my music on all of the um, downloading platforms, all of the downloading platforms. Just type in my name. You can also go to YouTube if you would like to hear some of my music um, and type in my name and a couple of things will pop up. That's good, man. And, and uh, I'm going to go check those out. And uh, also, you better make sure that you got one space free for me to get on your friends list. OK, brother, or else I'm going to take the show off the air. I got you. I got you. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm teasing, man. You know I'm teasing. But no, Re- Reginald is in, in very, very high demand, ladies and gentlemen. And I went to send him a friend request because I'm like, hey, man, the host of the show should be friends with the guests. And it said, sorry, this brother maxed out. Like, <laughs> man, man, Reginald, man, I can't even holler at you. Um, but no, it's it's really, really good to see someone in Eastern Carolina. And I told, Re- I told Reginald, I said, man, I didn't really realize the jewel and the and the 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 prize that we have in eastern carolina i didn't know i didn't know you were here bro and it's like man i've seen you somewhere i know we've we've crossed paths but it's just like wow man we we've got to really expand uh this man's uh connection with those who are hungry to do more in music and you can reach out to reginald at uh um on all of his platforms that he gave out on social media. What I like to do before we, before we depart, my brother is uh, you have a, you you have a ministry and it's, and it's more than just sweating and slapping a pulpit, but your ministry is, is, is very broad. And we appreciate that. I give all of my guests uh, an opportunity to speak directly to uh, our audience and give them a word of encouragement. So uh, you can you can take the next 60 seconds, if you would, and just give a word of encouragement to all of our listeners out there checking out uh, our podcast tonight. Okay, well, here's something that I tell people all the time, and this is what on this is what's on my heart tonight. With God, all things are possible. No stress, no worries and no fear. With fear, you cannot accomplish anything, but with God, all things are possible. Just trust and believe. You heard that, ladies and gentlemen. He said, trust and believe, and with God, all things are possible. Uh, Next time we have the maestro on the show, we might even have him sing and uh, bring his drum set next time. You know what I mean? (laughs) So Maestro, listen, we thank you so much for your time. We thank you so much for your gift. We thank you so much for what you're doing there in New Bern, North Carolina. And uh, you got to connect with them. Tell them one more time where they can find you, Reginald. Um, Look me up on Facebook at Reginald Midget Jr. And look me up on Facebook at my Maestro Productions page, M-Y-S-T-R-O Productions. And look look for my name on all digital downloading platforms and YouTube as well. That's the man, ladies and gentlemen. I had in my studios the maestro. I mean, how often do you get to have a maestro? So, Reginald, I appreciate you. I'll keep you in my prayers. I'm looking forward to further collaborations, okay, my friend? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Man, it's been a pleasure. You're a great interview, and we'll talk again soon, brother. All right. Have a good one, man. Have a good night. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would say, you guys know, I would say this usually at this point, that that's the end of the work week for me, but it's not. We uh, have (laughs) one more show to do tomorrow. But, man, what a great uh, young man. What a great attitude. What a great spirit. Uh, What a great gift in Eastern Carolina. I, I said, man, Reginald, I mean, you got global exposure and, you know, you there in little old New Bern. And he talked about it, man, being consistent, making connections, working on your craft, being willing to, to reach out. And so I want y'all to reach out and connect with him, man. He's he's really a prized possession in our in our region. You know, that's somebody that you'd find in, in Nashville or California or New York. And he's here in Eastern Carolina where is also the home of CL King. So uh, he's got Maestro Productions there and uh, you can find him at Reginald Midget Jr. or the Maestro uh, on Facebook and you can connect with him. So again, another positive person making an impact and that's what this show is about. Impact in Life 24-7. Tomorrow night, we're hosting a very special episode of our show. Uh, It will be on at 5 o'clock. Okay, y'all, I know y'all going to be traveling and all that, but five o'clock Eastern Standard Time is when I could book the one and only Will Kennedy. Uh, that band has been in existence for almost 40 years and uh, over 40 years, 25 albums, multiple Grammy nominations and awards. He's been rated as the number one drummer in the world three times in Drummer World magazine a humble man who is a gift 
in terms of his craft. Uh, a legend and a superstar amongst drummers in the world, not just <laughs> traveled all across the world with the Yellow Jackets, the legendary jazz fusion band Yellow Jackets. And so Will Kennedy will be with us tomorrow, five o'clock live. And he said he's going to let us see some of his new stuff or stuff that he's working on. Uh, we're very, very blessed that somebody of his caliber, a, a star, if you will, would take time out to be with us. And uh, just like Reginald, I consider Reginald a star. That brother's been all over the place and, and he took time to be with us. We bring these people on the show, ladies and gentlemen, to share them with you. So if you see something that you like about our show, share it with somebody else. That's how we, and that's how this whole operation works. And then if you like to be a sponsor, don't just watch us all the time for free, <laughs> become a sponsor. CLKingSpeaker.com. That's right. It takes a ton of money to keep this show on the air. Now, we're not just doing it with an iPhone and uh, just winging it. We have a lot of uh, infrastructure now associated with the show and programming and making it a quality show that people like Reginald, people like Will Kennedy, people like the doctor we just had the other day on will want to come on every week. Monday night at 8.30, Tuesday night at 8.30, and Thursday night at 8.30. So tomorrow is an is a special exclusive time with Impacting Life 24-7. It will be right here live, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. Spread the word. The flyer will be on our page. Uh, it's on multiple pages and uh, actually multiple outlets. And so it's not often that you get this kind of caliber of a person to come and share an hour with you because folks like that are very busy. So again, Impact Life 24-7, we had the maestro on tonight, Reginald uh, Midget Jr., the maestro, and he's the head of Maestro Productions and also the Minister of Music at West Street Christian Church there in New Bern, North Carolina. All right. We look forward to seeing y'all for the end of my work week. We're going out with a bang, 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, right here on Impact Life 24-7. Talk to you guys tomorrow.